Hi friends, this is Carolyn from the Los Angeles Maritime Institute. Today we're going to be learning about animal adaptations. What are animal adaptations? Adaptations are characteristics or traits of an animal that help it to survive in its environment. These characteristics fall into two main categories, structural and behavioral adaptations. Either or both of these types of adaptations help the animal survive. A structural adaptation is some type of physical feature of the body, like a tail on the fish or the shell of a crab. A behavioral adaptation is something an animal does, how it acts, usually in response to some type of outside stimulus, like a hermit crab hiding in its shell. As we talk about adaptations, we are also going to take a look at the intertidal zone. Intertidal zones are the place on the edge of the coast that changes depending on the rise and fall of the tide. At high tide, the intertidal zone is covered with water. However, as the tide starts to fall, the shoreline begins to emerge and with it comes tide pools. Tide pools are areas that trap water into tiny little pools as the tide falls below them. If the sun's out, the water in the tide pools can dry up pretty quickly. However, if it is cloudy, tide pools may have water in them for the duration of the low tide until it's covered back up with the rising tide. Animals living in these zones have to have adaptations to help them survive this ever-changing environment or leave it when it is necessary. Creatures living in the intertidal zone have to sustain many different challenges such as wave forces, temperature changes, and wetness. Let's break down how each of these could pose a challenge to creatures living in the intertidal zone. Wave forces, often referred to as wave action, can put a lot of continuous pressure on creatures in the intertidal zone, especially during low tide. During low tides, the breaking waves will pummel creatures in the exposed areas. Most ocean creatures rely on wetness to survive. With the tides rising and falling about twice per day, animals must be ready for drier conditions at the low tide on a regular basis. Lastly, most creatures that live in the ocean have a relatively low range of temperature that their bodies can survive in, so it takes some specialized adaptations for intertidal creatures to handle the temperature change that comes with the low tides as they sit in the sun for hours. Now let's talk about the different structural adaptations that we see in the intertidal zone and how they help creatures survive these challenges. Many creatures have structural adaptations that help them avoid being washed away by the breaking waves. Sea stars have thousands of suctioning tube feet that anchor it to rocks and other surfaces. Clams and mussels have smooth, more flat shells designed to let the water flow right over them to reduce the force of the waves. Snails and other mollusks have waterproof shells that help them hold in water. This water storage helps keep them wet even when they are not immersed in water. When they're closed, they're able to hold water inside of their shells. To keep warm in the cold water, sea lions and other mammals have layers of blubber that act like a nice big snowsuit. Some sea stars are able to keep cool in the sun by pumping cold water through their bodies. Now let's talk about the different behavioral adaptations that we see in the intertidal zone and how those allow the creatures to survive. Sea stars know when waves can be too strong for their feet to secure them. They will seek out safer and less turbulent places to hide. They can do this by retreating deeper down into the ocean, hiding between rocks to reduce wave pressure, or grouping together to protect one another. Bivalves, such as clams and mussels, will bring water into their shell and body and close up nice and tight when the tide is low and they are not submerged in water. When bivalves bring water into their shells to stay hydrated, this cold ocean water also helps them regulate their temperature and keep them as cold as they like to be, even when the sun is out. Now that we've talked a little bit about animal adaptations in the intertidal zone, let's dive a little deeper. Jonah is a sea star and he's going to take us through the intertidal zone. Jonah has come really high up in the intertidal zone during high tide as he hunts for creatures like clams and mussels that have attached themselves to rocks. Jonah has found a small stack, but he's gotten himself into a little bit of a pickle. As the tide is falling, he is now going to be exposed to sunlight and wave action. Jonah does have a special adaptation that lets him pump cold seawater through his body. This will help keep him cool, 
but he'll run out of seawater when he is out of the water for a really long time. It's in Jonah's best interest to head down lower in the tidal zone to protect himself against overheating and drying out, and he'll find more food deeper in the tidal zone. As he heads down, Jonah has spotted a crab. This crab is scuttling about the surface on a rock. The crab has a rocky colored shell that helps him camouflage against the rocky terrain. Birds trying to hunt will have a hard time spotting him. Additionally, he has two different types of claws. He has one big strong crusher claw that he uses to break open shells and one smaller precision claw for grabbing things. This crab is eating the algae growing on the rock. This crab is also headed towards the water and Jonah is going to follow him. As Jonah slowly uses his numerous tube feet to move down towards the water, he sees a lonely sea urchin perched on a rock. Sea urchins are really cool creatures. They have spines all over the top of their body that they can use to fend off predators. It's not easy for birds and other sea creatures to get the sea urchins under their spine. In addition to this structural adaptation, they will use their teeth to burrow into the rocks to build a little hole for themselves. This is a protective behavioral adaptation. Jonah is unsure about the sea urchin as their spines can pierce him and hurt him really badly. Also, some are poisonous. However, he thinks he might be able to eat it. Oh no, it looks like there's a seagull that beat him to it. Seagulls have sharp beaks that can break open the sea urchin and eat what's inside. As we head towards the water, Jonah is a little sad because he lost his sea urchin snack. However, he does notice some friends. There are limpets and barnacles all over the rock he is climbing down. These shelled creatures have strong feet that they dig into rocks to hold themselves in place, just like a plant uses roots to hold itself in place. In addition to their strong feet, their shells protect them against wave action. The flat shape of the limpet shell disperses the force from the wave. Because barnacles don't really move, they have to protect themselves wherever they are, and they have to choose a really good place to be. Jonah finally made it into the tide pool. Inside this pool of water, you see all sorts of marine life. He sees fish, the algae, and crabs, and barnacles, and limpets. And Jonah also sees a sea anemone with his tentacles waving in the water. Sea anemones are much softer than a lot of shelled invertebrates in the inner tidal zone. They have adapted to protect themselves using nematocysts, stinging cells on their tentacles, just like their cousins, the jellyfish. If you poke the center of the anemone, they will retract their tentacles and curl up into a ball to protect themselves. Creatures that can't move, like anemones, are prey for hunters. While most things won't eat anemones because of their stinging cells, some sea stars will, and Jonah is happy that he has found a snack. Animals that are able to move more freely tend to be hunters. They swim into the pools when the water level is high and feed on plants and animals that live there. Legs and tentacles, flippers and fins are all structural adaptations that allow animals that have them to move more freely and hunt for food. Searching for food is a behavioral adaptation. Of course, some predators are also prey. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel and see you next week.